This is Rich from Mountain Soda Garage. Welcome to a new episode. I haven't done an Articat episode in a while, and I know some of you have noticed because you've messaged me about it. Today we're going to be looking at the cooling system on the Articats, the 18 and newer for the SeaTech 800 motors. Um, and now the motor changed a little bit from 8, 19 to 20, and what a lot of people don't know also, the CAT changed the thermostat from the 18 and 19 thermostats different than the 20 and newer CATs, and we're going to go into that detail a little bit later in the video. A lot of people talk about the mountain sleds, problems with cooling, especially on the trails. Um, I mean, everyone knows the mountain sled wasn't made for trails, the longer trails you're going to, less snow you're going to get from your track flipping up on your cooling system underneath your tunnel. And so the bigger problem you're going to have with cooling when you're on the trails. Some things you can do to help with that, uh, make sure your cooling system's topped off and make sure that you're not, you don't have any leaks. Also make sure that you don't, that you're using your ice scratchers on your rails. Another thing that people commonly overlook, a lot of people think they can just get on the trail and, and rip and not have to worry about their temperature, but keep an eye on your temperature on your da dash, put it on the temperature mode and keep an eye on what it's going on. When you start getting up to 150, 160 degrees, I always pull off, usually you can find some powder on the side of the road to kick up into your track and onto your high facts. Sometimes you can even ride in the powder on the side of the road a little bit and uh, cool things off. Or some people pull off the side of the road, you know, you've seen them lean and spin their tracks, they can spin more snow up onto their coolers to cool it down. So there's a number of things you can do, but you have to be aware of your, of your heat and your cooling system as you're going down the trail. So just be aware of that. Some other things to think about if you're having problems with cooling are, has your engine been apart lately? Have you had the head off or something else? You had to drain the cooling system and then put it back in, because a lot of times you can get air bubbles in the cooling system. And that also can be problematic. So if you don't get all the air bubbles out, then you're going to have air in there. And the air is going to act differently than the coolant for cooling. You're going to have cooling problems if you have air bubbles in your cooling system. So these cooling systems on these Articats have a plastic bottle. We can see down here with the coolant cap on it. Sometimes the bottle can, can become deformed where the cap seals to it. And it can leak a little bit or cause problems that way. So make sure your, your cooling system's in proper order. The cap works right. The coolant's not coming out. Uh, leaking from the cap out the tube pair and out the bottom of your sled and just make sure all that's in good order now I've, what I've found is the cooling line here for full is like down here somewhere it seems like I've found if you fill this thing all the way up past the full line you might get a little that leaks out but it seems like the it cools better if it has that little bit more bit of coolant in it so that's another thing that I look at when I'm having cooling issues with my Articats okay so another p thing that people don't commonly know is from the 18 and 19 Articat Articat changed the thermostat from the 18 to 19 to 20 and newer snowmobiles. And the, actually the 20 and newer thermostat opens at a lower temperature than the 18 and 19 was. So it's not a bad idea if you have an 18 and 19 to use a later thermostat on it so you're going to get better cooling. So if we look at this, it's also another really interesting about these two thermostats. So here we have the 18 and 19 Articat thermostat shown here, part number 24, which is here, uh, part number 091. 3022, $68 for a thermostat. That's kind of expensive. The gasket's 21 bucks. But if we go to the newer thermostat, which is this one, the 2020 Plus Cat, different part number 0913-034, this thermostat's only $16.79. This is on Cat Country. And the, the gasket's $21. So actually the gasket to put this thermostat in actually costs more than the thermostat itself. So kind of crazy that such a huge price difference. So don't get caught up in buying the more expensive one if you have an 18 or 19. Get the updated, the new one that comes on the newer cats. So we're going to show you in a minute how to take this out. But first, before there's no real easy way. There's no drain plug on these to drain the fluid before you try and get to your thermostat. So I'm going to just show you a couple of tricks. It's If you can get a little suction device like this, I think I bought this at Harbor Freight. It's probably like 6 or $7. 
and you get a tube down here, you try and feed it down as far down into your thermostat hole as you can and suck out and drain into another container as much fluid as possible. That way you can get your coolant level low enough that you can usually take your thermostat housing off without spilling the fluid all over. Okay, now you can see I got the sled tipped over. I've got the handlebar propped, oh, an inch or two off the ground so it's not squishing on the side panel. And this is probably the best position to have this in in order to get to your thermostat. The other thing, once you get it tipped over like this, you want to put your suction device back in and suction out more fluid. Now I've got maybe close to half a gallon I've sucked out. That should give us plenty of fluid out. So when we pull off this, the cat cover for the thermostat, that we're not going to leak all over. And the next thing about this, if you're doing this for the first time, it's a little bit easier if you pull this plate off. There's four screws here. There's four down here, and then there's one here, and that plate just slips off because there's one bolt clear back up in here. It's a little bit tough to get to, so I'm probably going to pull that plate off just for this video, but if you're pretty good with tools, you can get to that other one without pulling this off, but we're going to pull it off for this video just so you can get a better view of this. Now that we've got our PTO mounting plate off, it's a good time to inspect this plate for cracks because these have been known to crack, especially on the older models, the 12 to 15s. You can see this plate here has got a crack right there. It's got another crack there. We turn it over, it goes there and there. So the um, good thing to look for is cracks in this when you pull it apart. It's also not a bad idea to inspect this bearing here on your jack shaft, see if it's loose, and then kind of clean some of the dirt and debris out of it there. So just a couple of maintenance things to do while you have this off. But that really exposes our thermostat housing here. It's got four torque screws on it. They're a 30 Torx bit. So we need to take those off. We still have this hose hooked on. We can kind of pull this up out of the way to get to the thermostat once we get those four screws out. Now I'm just going to use a little ratchet to pull all these bolts out with, these 30 Torx bits. Now what you want to be careful of is don't drop them down in there because you may never see them again. So be real careful when you pull these out not to lose them down in your, down in your engine compartment. Now, with any luck at all, we've taken out enough coolant that this isn't going to spill coolant all over when we pull this cap off. See, there we go. And we can just pull this up out of the way. Our gasket's still in place, and here's our thermostat right here, and this should just lift out just like that. See? Broken. I didn't even know this was broken. That's the other common thing that happens to these. Um, that breaks. I know this sled's been having some overheating problems, but there's your broken thermostat. Okay, now one thing I wanted to point out, this one's been heated up. See how this one extends all the way out when it's hot, and this one's pulled up? What that does is when it's cold like this, this opens up the bypass, so coolant flows only through your engine to heat it up faster. Then once your engine starts to heat up, this drops down, covers up that hole, and so the coolant flows not only just in the engine, but all the way through your cooling system through here. And so you kind of have two separate cooling systems. You have a warm-up phase where the bypass pole is open and coolant's only flowing through your engine for the most part to heat out your engine heat up faster. Then once your engine heats up and it goes into this position, when it, this is longer like this, it closes up that bypass hole and circulates coolant through your cooling system underneath your tunnel. Okay, let's talk about those two circulations a little bit more. So you have this hose here that goes to your cooling system, you have a hose way down in there, you can see with the clamp on it, that goes to your water pump. And then you have this hole here down in the bottom, see that hole way down the bottom there? That goes to your engine. So, when your engine is cold, this, your thermostat, this opens, leaves that hole open right there, but it closes off the circulation going through the big hole, so coolant circulates only through your engine. Once this heats up and it, this starts to open, how this one's in the open phase, this end of it gets longer, plugs up that hole that goes to your, just to your engine, and that allows coolant to circulate not only through your engine, but also through your coolant inside your tunnel. So you have kind of two cooling systems in a modern snowmobile. You have the warm-up phase, and then once your engine starts to warm up, the circulation to the engine, just the engine shuts off, and it circulates through the engine and your cooling system. Now we're going to put this back together. Now we've already dropped our new thermostat down there with the new rubber gasket around it. We've also put the new 
gasket on our thermostat housing. Now we're actually going to put a teeny bit of Loctite on these bolts just because we don't want these backing out. Now remember, there's only one bolt, the rest are short, so we're going to put the long one in first. Start that one, and we'll put in the rest of these, and then we will tighten these down to spec, and then we'll put our coolant back in, and then we'll be finished. All right, Go so we got our sled put back together, we got our PTO plate back on, we've got all the bolts with blue Loctite on it torqued down, we got our thermostat cover um, put back on and torqued down, we can need to put our clutches on, put our coolant in. Now, a couple of secrets to getting your coolant in without getting a bunch of air bubbles in it and having other heating problems is, you get the front end far off the ground like this, uh, it really helps. If you do that, what happens is all your air rises up to the top and when you put your coolant in, it pushes all the air out. If you leave it flat on the ground, they take the chance of air bubbles getting in there. So that's one thing you do, so I got this filled up. The other thing you wanna do is once you got it filled up with coolant, turn it on and run it until it hits maybe 120 degrees when we know the thermostat is open and circulating. That's also gonna circulate some of the air bubbles out here. Then let it sit for a little bit, fill it up a little bit again until you don't have to uh, put any more coolant in it. So hope this video was helpful on keeping your Articat cool and running the best it can throughout the winter. And the thermostat is a really big thing that a lot of times people overlook when they're having a coolant problem like this one. We really didn't even know the thermostat was broken and it was not definitely not going to be able to function right during in the condition that it was. So it's a good thing we pulled this apart to do this video and found that broken thermostat. So anyway, like the video, share them. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel and have a great winter. We'll see you next time at Mountain Sledder Garage. If you have any questions about this video or others, make sure you message me and uh, be safe out there on the mountain. Great.